Okay. Let's review circular cross sections first. Make sure we know what we know. Because I'm going to do the same example twice. I'm going to do it the way you know or should know. And then I'm going to do it another way. But for now, the old way. The way you should have been doing these in the homework. When using circular cross sections to find volume of a solid created by revolving a region about the x-axis, we integrate with respect to... Well, maybe you don't know the answer to that, actually, by just looking at it. I don't know that that's perfectly clear at this point. So let me skip ahead and draw the picture they're talking about, draw the circular cross section, and then ask the question again. So here's the question that's coming up. Number three. The region bounded by the curve y equals root x. Me, personally, as soon as they mention a graph, I don't wait around to read the whole question. I go, let's get that on the page first. Let's get y equals root x. And you're supposed to sort of know y equals root x. And if you don't, well, it doesn't take long to come up with it. Square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. And there's the graph of y equals root x. And I've read the... Uh, and so that goes like that. There's y equals root x, okay? Well on my way to visualizing, so I don't confuse myself as I'm reading the question. The region bounded by the curve y equals root x, good. The x-axis, so apparently this will be the bottom of this thing. And the line x equals 4. That's important too. Now, when those lines, I don't know why, I draw them dotted. I don't like them to get, I don't like my picture to get too busy. But now I can see the shape that we're talking about here. We're talking about this little piece in here. And I'm going to shade it very, very lightly um, with this color here. I hope this is just, just light enough that you can just see it. Did I choose the right color? Is that just light enough that you can just little see the area there, barely? Yeah? Well, you're, you're hopefully coloring it on your page too. That's the part that's going to rotate around the x-axis and make a solid, this sideways vase is the only word I can think of that describes this thing. It's actually called the paraboloid, but I mean, it, it, for an experience, uh, a, a, a vase is the, is the best example. Now, revolved around the x-axis. Sketch a two-dimensional graph. Oh, I'm on my way to doing that. Then I'm going to put the bottom part on. I like, okay, so it's like, uh, whoop, pen. And I'm going to go with uh, red again, but just, see, it's like that and like that. And again, I like dotting that. Me personally, and I won't pretend that I'm great at drawing these. I'm good enough is all I am. And so when I rotate that around, it creates circles every time. This thing spinning around creates these little circles, and I'm going to draw a circle on there. This is my best 3D drawing of a circle on there. Do 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 do. The dotted line helps to picture the circle. And now, I, well, that really helps. I didn't do too bad. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. That circle really shows what's happening here. There's a circle going across there. There's a review of circular cross sections in one example. Get the graph on the page. Draw a representative circle so you can see what's going on. And now, now I'm ready to answer question one. Yeah. When, a, when using circular cross-sections to find the volume of a solid created by revolving the region around the x-axis, we integrate with respect to, we're going this way across, the circles are this way, we integrate with respect to x. I think your textbook acts like you should memorize these. And I don't know. It's a lot to memorize, and it's easy to mess yourself up when you, you just rely on memorization. I'm like, I, I would have put this question afterwards going, you know, but it, it does help in what's coming on in the lesson. So then the second question was, when using circular cross-sections to find volume of a solid created by revolving the region around the y-axis, we end up integrating with respect to y. Okay, th those are good reference points. Now, now I like those reference points. Anyway, which, where was I? Sketch a two-dimensional graph of the region that's being revolved around the x-axis. Okay, I did it. Use circular cross-sections to determine the volume of the solid. Here's your powerful formula Yeah, when doing these. Volume equals... Integral from A to B of A at X dx. And I chose X because I decided by looking at the picture or from question one that we were integrating with respect to X. You're like, you're making a really big deal about this dx thing. And I am on purpose because there's something coming in this lesson that's going to mess us up. And we got to keep track of which one we're differentiating, or sorry, integrating with respect to. A little flashback there to differentiation. Okay, well, we can do a little better than that because we know we're using circular cross-sections. So circular cross-sections means we're doing volume 
a to b of pi, and I always put the radius like that. Me personally, just remember, I'm looking for the equation for the radius, not a specific radius, because the radius is going to change. As, this, as I do different slices along here, the radius changes as I go along. There's an equation for radius all the way along the way. The good news is the radius is often the y value. We found out yesterday it doesn't have to be the y value, but it's often the y value. So what I get here is volume equals integral. Oh, now I'm ready. From 0 to my dotted line helps here. x equals 4. Oh, can I slide the pi out front there? You know I love common factoring that out there. It just makes my integrals easier. Any common factor pushed out front, don't play around with it. And I need the radius here. Oh, I should have labeled this here. Y equals root X. So that's the radius. Yeah, yeah. Obviously done a bunch of these. I'll write it in there, but he's right. There's definitely a step to skip there because you know that, that you're squaring that radius there. Um, am I going to end up with enough space here? I'm not sure. Uh, I'll try and fit it in here. Volume equals pi integral 0 to 4 of x dx. And lots of times these work out that the actual integral, once you get there, isn't particularly difficult. Setting it up is completely difficult, which, by the way, is sort of good news for a test. Let's say you totally mess this up and use the wrong radius or use the wrong limits of integration. You'd still be able to finish the question. So there's lots of part marks available. It's not a do or die situation uh, on these usually. And so now volume equals pi antiderivatives one half x squared from four to zero. If you've done enough of these, you're sort of used to that zero. When it's from zero, the second one is going to be a zero. I'll write it in this time, but that's the time you'll see that sk skipped, right? So I get pi, the first one is one half times four squared, and the second one is one half times zero squared. And once you've done enough of them, you start getting used to that zero going. I, you're happy when that zero's in there because that last term oftentimes is nothing. So 16, one half, I think I get eight pi as the volume there. That's what you're supposed to sort of be good at already. Any questions about that example? Well, now something weird is going to happen. Uh, I'm going to have to do a two-part video here. I'm not sure what's going to happen because I want to show you a demo in class that I won't be able to show you on the video. So I'm going to pause the video, but I don't know what's going to happen with the video. Mrs. Todd told me.